Welcome to the Creativity Lab, the podcast that shows how to channel your creativity to live your best, most beautiful life. And now here's your host, director of the Creativity Lab at West Los Angeles College, Harvard PhD, TV writer and professor, Dr. Katherine Boutry. Thank you for joining us. Today's interview is hosted by an actor with hundreds of credits, including Brooklyn Nine-Nine, iCarly, and Bob's Burgers. He's also the producer of our podcast. Please welcome Keisuke Hawashi. Film and television director Jennifer Pong made her mark on Hollywood by bringing poignant drama to fantastical realities. Her very first feature films were selections at the prestigious Sundance Film Festival. She now directs high prestige television for Disney, Marvel, Warner Brothers, Apple, and Universal, including shows like The Boys, Foundation, The Flight Attendant, and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The winner of awards from Tokyo to San Francisco, Germany to Rhode Island. She is currently preparing to direct two major motion pictures. We welcome director, writer, graduate of the American Film Institute, and one of my oldest friends, Jennifer Pong. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining us today. Kiss gay. Hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Jennifer and I met in 19, can I say 1998? Sure. Uh, Jen cast me. Uh, on her film at the American Film Institute called Love Limited, which went on to win you know, a boatload of awards. But uh, I also have to thank you for introducing me to my wife, Kristen. Oh my gosh, how crazy. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good times, I'm so happy that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you've been very, very busy this year already uh, in your work as a director for, for television. Where you've been working uh, the past couple of months as a director? I, uh, I spent some time in Atlanta. Um, I was back on the show, Stargirl. I also spent some time in Iceland. I did two episodes of The Flight Attendant. What was it that made you decide to become a director? Not only in an industry with so few women directors, but also even fewer Asian American female director. I, I used to read a lot of fantasy books just as a kid, tiny, like a teeny tiny kid. I was like <laughs> reading like, you know, um, stories about, kids climbing to the top of trees in England and finding whole other worlds. And I think my imagination was really captured by all of that. So the idea of being able to create other worlds um, and have characters living and breathing inside of them was super appealing to me. I didn't necessarily understand that there was like an intense obstacle of like gender race like kind of in front of me at the time and it's confusing because you're like well just because I'm like I look different or sound different or you know act differently from other directors doesn't make not make me a director like I guess that could be a naive way of looking at it but for whatever reason didn't occur to me I thought you know what so I'm different whatever um and my mom and my dad were pretty supportive earlier on I mean they were a little bit freaked out when they, you know, I wasn't making tons of money um, right away. But when, once I started becoming successful, they're like, oh, thank God she stuck with that. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was interesting, I mean, but it wasn't easy. I needed their help, you know, they needed their support because I wasn't, it's not like we came from a super wealthy, like trust fund or anything. It was more, it's not like generations of inherited wealth. It's we're literally immigrants. It was very risky for me to kind of engage in a creative profession. But ultimately, I liked the idea of doing something that was special, different, you know, and it seemed like there was a, there was space for for my voice. And so I kind of and I got the support of I got a lot of encouragement um, from my peers. I, I felt a lot of passion for actually creating cool images and working with actors. And so all of that just kept me going. What exactly is the job of a director on a TV set? Depends what the show needs from you. Uh, Usually I find myself picking shows that want, you know, kind of the best of my creativity. It can run the gamut from being like kind of an organizational um, manager to like watching performances. For me, I, I also watch performances for authenticity. I'm kind of the big like truth detector, lie detector person. Um, so I can like feel when something doesn't feel real or doesn't feel convincing. And so I work with actors to kind of help make the moment make sense and feel real. I work with a cinematographer to kind of create shots that are effective and powerful and really tell the story. Work with the 
production designers uh, to kind of figure out what we need for our particular episodes, make requests. Most recently, I requested a lot of red leaves. Um, I red leaves. Have, lots of red leaves. Uh, I had this whole fixation on red leaves being a symbol of something, malintent or something, or passion. And so I kind of created my own look for a couple of episodes uh, just to kind of help make something more visually interesting. It's not a single job. It seems to encompass like literally a hand in every single department of, of making a film or making a TV show. You know, the way I see it, I'm ultimately responsible for every frame that ends up being broadcast or printed or made into a movie. I'll look at the big picture. Um, and, and that means, okay, um, if something is feeling off, I'll try to be vaguely honest. I'll be pretty honest with um, whoever I'm working with, whether it's a DP or um, production designer or, or actor. I try to help them be heard because I think that's usually the, the quote unquote trick, which is literally like, yeah, let's hear everything out and see like what's bothering you or you know what do you need. So that's really it. It's really just making sure people feel heard, see and and hear them, literally genuinely hear them, and see if that's anything that can help um, help uh, me get to kind of the best version of an episode or film. And usually there's something there that's totally legitimately something that needs to be heard. The films that you've made, uh, Advantageous and no, Half-Life uh, and Love Limited, you were dealing with issues which didn't seem to be often addressed in mainstream media. Are you drawn to specific ideas or themes? And are you given the latitude to follow those themes? I mean, I'm usually drawn toward seeing people who are, you know, don't have a lot of representation in film or television and giving them kind of some, like a three-dimensional kind of portrait of this particular character. Like, I really like seeing complex um, women, complex people of color, um, you know, and, and show that they come from a real human place. This, you know, it sounds so silly coming out of my mouth, like, duh. Nonsense. <laughs> People are people. For a long time there, there were a lot of women um, in film and television or, or female characters, women characters that were just really basic, too basic, you know? And mm -hmm. when you're as a consumer, when an audience sees just repeated images of boring women over and over again, they just don't expect much from their own women in their lives, um, whether they're a woman themselves or whether they're not a woman. Uh, in your career, what has been the largest obstacle that you have faced as a creative professional? There are always obstacles. I think generally speaking, what every filmmaker faces in the beginning is financing obstacles. You know, like they to kind of create your first or second kind of show reel showcase piece, you need money. And film is film is expensive. Like making movies is expensive because you're feeding a lot of people, you're paying a lot of people. It's not like you're sitting in a studio painting something and that painting might cost you know, X amount of dollars. This is just like you, the, the longer you shoot, the more money you spend. And so everyone's always pressuring you, especially your producers, like to kind of make sure you stay on schedule and budget, which is totally the right thing to do. And one of the probably the biggest things that will face everybody when they enter a directing profession is the number of voices that we are trying to weigh in on like your decision making. Mm -hmm. And all of those voices are very legitimately weighing in, but you're ultimately the person who holds the responsibility of the decision. Getting to understand what that really means, I think is a big challenge. Um, I figured it out, <laughs> but, but you know, it took a minute because I was like, you know, you're, you're encouraged to be an artist, you're encouraged to be responsible, you're encouraged to be fun, lively, and an entertainer, you're encouraged to be a great manager. And so balancing all those things you need to do as a director is super hard. How do you find the resilience to keep going when you know that there's going to be another problem that's going to hit you in the next 20 seconds? How do you find the resilience for that? That's a super great question. I meditate. <laughs> and it's like, I learned that from some of my directing mentors. Like most of my director directing mentors all have, you know, are always working on their sense of calm, their understand, their just confidence, probably all have therapists, you know. At the same time, I've come to a place where I realize that the stakes are high, but I also know that my job is to make something work. 
and that my vision matters. And then at some point, if the, a compromise needs to be made, then you make the compromise, you know, because it's, it's not like, I, it's, it shouldn't ever be life and death for anybody. You're making a made up, you know, piece of art. And um, yes, you're gonna fight for your vision. Yes, problems will come up, but it, you can't take it personally at all. Like there's no reason to. Um, I think some people try to make it personal and those are the people I try not to work with. <laughs> but um, I think that that's like one of the tricks you have to all watch out for is like people who try to make things personal. Now, how do you handle fear and uncertainty uh, even in your position now? I've had a decent support network of friends like yourself and you know family um, and loved ones who've always like been a great year for me and kind of a, um, also a, a kind of bouncing board. I can't remember that. <laughs> What's the term? Oh my God, I'm like- Bounding board. Bounding board. I'm like bounce board, white bounce. Thank you, <laughs> sounding board. Um, yeah, you need the sounding boards um, in your life to kind of like process things. You know, mentorship is really helpful. I've had multiple mentors in my life. I try to mentor others when I can. And then also working with your peers and, you know, having those lunches with fellow directors and going, okay, this is what happened to me. Uh, have, have this ever happened to you? And they always say, yes, that totally happened to me. Well, let's turn to uh, talking about creativity itself here. What do you consider to be your own strongest creative traits? I'd say this is the, the most truthful answer. It's actually being dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. So being able to kind of switch from my right brain to my left brain to my right brain to my left brain, you know, within minutes, if not. 10 minutes <laughs> um, and it's, it has to do, it's important because you have to go, okay, how does the scene feel? Is it truthful? Could I do better? Could we all do better? What are we doing? Do we need another take? Do we have the time? Do we have the time? Is it worth it? Okay, 30 minutes from now, like, you know, can I make up the time elsewhere by simplifying blank? You know, and these are all things that are happening in quick succession. Um, it really taxes the brain. So that's why even though like I barely exercise while I'm shooting, like I lose all this weight while I'm shooting because I'm just like going, and like brain's turning, you're standing, you're like, ah. so, so that's all you try to like keep it light and easy, but it is also like you, you really are deciding how to spend money, like lots of money. <laughs> um, and so, and you're working with people con continuously who all have their own interests at, at heart, um, which makes sense because that's the point. Like you're all there to fight for your department um, because that's why you were hired to kind of do the best job you can within your department. And so as a director, you're kind of like making all those choices with all those department heads and with all the talent and going, okay, this here, a little of that there, a little salt, a little pepper, a little garlic. Okay. Let's turn down the heat. Okay. Let's raise the heat. You know, I watch a lot of cooking shows also. <laughs> it's really relevant, <laughs> really relevant uh, to directing. When I am most creative and when I'm most proud, it's when I've actually let go of the fear of succeeding and going, oh, wow, this would be really beautiful. When I feel, my saying, feel myself saying, that's, that's beauty right there. And if we do this, that'll be even more beautiful or even more funny, you know, and I'm, let, I'm kind of in that space. It's, it's great. It's, it usually has great results. And so I try to be better and better at like letting go of the fear of failure and actually just being totally in the moment, much like an actor. As a female director, have you ever felt that you've been treated differently or that you have to behave differently from mm. other directors simply because of your gender or your ethnicity? I mean, definitely you try not to think about it that way because it can really get in your head. And it's also mm. super frustrating because that can like lead to this kind of resentment. Yeah. And you don't want to kind of lead with resentment. I mean, that's just not <laughs> helpful. Why are you even there? I mean, you, you know, and so you really do push the positivity of it all. Unconscious bias, I think, is a really great term. Mm -hmm. Unconscious bias that's in every single one of us about every other person. There's these biases that we build in our systems that just kind of get reinforced over time because of things like bad media, like yeah. <laughs> that make you presume things or assume things like, oh, all women are soft our women are indecisive all women are fearful our women are you know and that's like problematic in so many levels and it also leaves a lot of room for just people getting in your way if i hesitate to make a decision people will rush to my rescue and it's 
drives me crazy. Um, and, and so I don't let that happen as much. Um, I actually check it. I really can say, hold on one second. I'm going to, I'm actually putting some thought into this. Give me one moment. Um, because, you know, there's like, you, I think some people depend on their, depending on their experience, don't have that inherent um, self filtering thing where they, ex they just, they just think being helpful is good. Um, and I get that too. Cause I, I totally also think help being helpful is good. If someone is lesser known and coming in as a newer director, there's going to be more, kind of, hey, how can I help you make this a success kind of attitude? Oh, that's fine, actually. I mean, it makes complete sense. It's just confusing because you, when you're like a woman of color, you're going, is this because I'm a woman of color or is this because I'm new, you know? And, and so like, that's where it can get confusing and it takes a little bit to sort that out. Thank you for, for talking about that. I, I, I know it's not an easy thing to address. No, uh, it's fine. Like, I've been through it so much that I'm like, <laughs> 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 it's actually fine. I've had such a, I've just kind of figured out my, I felt my stride and I've had a lot more experience. So I come into assignments and I know that I have the authority and I know that people have to respect what I have to offer. And I know that I am confidently collaborative. So it's not like a problem. Are there any creative traits that you want to get better at? Being able to go, I'm fearlessly creative right now. That's always something I'm working on because I know it will be for the better of everybody, including the, like the show or the movie, like being a little bit like, yeah, I'm weighing all the, yes, I understand I'm hearing all the limitations. Okay, great. Okay, how can I be creative? Like that's, I think, um, the thing you have to continuously remind yourself, how do you serve the story? Um, and, and that's only because there's, I love everyone. I, like, I love working with my crew. I love my crew. I know that everyone's there for all the right reasons. And so you want to respect what everything has, everything, what everyone has to bring to the table. And then you have to go, okay, my turn. Like, uh, how do we make this good? <laughs> so it's like taking all those great ideas and then leveling up with that, you know, mm. maybe one idea will level, level it up, but maybe there's a way to even get that even more strong. And I found that like, as I had more experience, I just had been better at going, oh yeah, that was a right, the right instinct. So trusting my instincts, you know, mm. is the thing that you're always challenged to not trust your instincts because people are involved, you know, you're working in collaborative medium, but I'm finding that, that my instincts are usually right. So at this point, what is next for you? And, and I know that there's a lot of confidentiality agreements that you have to sign <laughs> with, when you're dealing with things that could cost $100 million a minute. Is there anything that you can share with us of what you're going to be doing next? There's a, a couple of feature films in the work, one, one that we're starting soft prep on that'll be from a young, for a young audience, and it'll involve like musical sequences and action sequences and stuff. So I'm super excited about that. Some world building. I can't really name the name right now, um, but, but that's um, kind of cool. And it might involve more than one film. It might be a trilogy. It might be two, you know. So these are all kind of work like kind of happening. Um, and then there's another one that I'm helping to develop with some pretty established humans. Um, and I like, you know, I really like their script. It's, it has to do with kind of a evacuation of, um, of a war zone. It, there's a lot of things that are being like packaged right now as well. And, and there's like some sci-fi project um, that takes place on a galaxy far away. So it, it, yeah, those are the, the ones that, <laughs> not that galaxy. So for our final question here, uh, we would like to ask, do you have any best words of wisdom that you can share with our viewers on how to thrive in a creative career? Like I said, try not to let it be personal. Um, definitely create a support network of friends, mentors, and if, if necessary, like, you know, mental health professionals. Also try to empathize with the process of your other collaborators. Make sure you understand that it is a group effort not just within your department, um, but across departments, uh, because that's felt. It's felt when you're a good collaborator and people want that experience again. I think, you know, you leave a trail of like experiences behind you. And so you want the, that trail to be a good one. Um, so, so I think you be careful what you fight for in a way, like, like it's like fight for what you believe in, but 
in a way that I think is respectful. I think respect is probably inherently like the, the number one thing. I do want to thank you again for being so supportive of me and my own career for, I can't believe it's been nearly 25 years since we met. And I guess in general, thanking you for all the encouragement and support that you've done to everybody who's benefited from your vision and your work. It has been a true privilege getting you to uh, getting to watch your career explode over the past couple of years. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. That's a lot of kind words. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for, for having me and for being such a support in my career as well. Well, it's, it's been wonderful. All right. Thank you very much, Jen. Okay.